But to be fair, I, I think I dealt with it very well. Oh, I'm from Doncaster. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we are counting down our picks for the top 20 worst British comedies. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the terrible and controversial sitcoms to ever be created and broadcast on UK tellies. What's your British comedy guilty pleasure? Let us know below. Number 20. The Melting Pot seen that the, when we were showing the tongues and the lorry stuff, that is the one he has arranged for. Spike Milligan is considered a comic legend in the UK, but The Melting Pot, which he created, wrote and starred in, is something we all wish didn't exist and could be erased from our memories. Broadcast in 1976, the first episode was on BBC. Then, none of the others were released and it could have something to do with the fact that the two white leads, Milligan and John Bird, donned blackface to look like they're from Pakistan. Dick sent us. You will say that? You will say Dick sent us? Yes, yes, I will say Dick sent us. Good. Even another white actor, Harry Fowler, played someone with Chinese heritage and is seen wearing a jumper with a very outdated character on it. Ah, but not recently, son. These features will change like my dialect. Honestly, this show is dire and should never see the light of day again. Number 19, Citizen Khan. There are some mysteries out there that we'll never really know the answers to. What happened to Lord Lucan? Who was Jack the Ripper? And how did Citizen Khan get five series? Are you sweating, Dad? No, of course not. Has someone turned the heating on? <laughs> At least, the latter is asked by many in the audience. The show follows Mr. Khan, a self-described leader of the community and his family in Birmingham. Even after the first episode aired, the BBC quickly received 185 complaints. Viewers weren't keen on the stereotyping of British Pakistanis and the mocking of the Muslim faith. The show was also slated by critics who held nothing back. You are a very nice man, but I play with a straight bat, you know what I mean? Arifa Akbar described it as like sitcoms from the 1970s, while The Herald called Citizen Khan the worst comedy. Number 18, Honey for Tea. You see, I am your mother. <laughs> Since 1964, we Brits have felt smug about America's Dick Van Dyke's grim attempt at doing a Cockney accent in Mary Poppins. We've mocked it for years, rubbing it in the faces of our cousins across the pond. Well, our collective smile evaporated quickly after Honey for Tea did the reverse, as England's Felicity Kendall attempted a US accent. You did what with Lucy? Excuse me? Uh, hang on. Simon, I'm on the phone. It's incredibly distracting, and the region that her accent is based on changes from sentence to sentence. Kendall plays a broke British-born American who returns to Blighty after her husband's passing since he invested lots of cash in St Maud's College in Cambridge. She uses this to become an assistant bursar. After seven episodes, the show was canned with little fanfare. You're a weasel, Basil. You exploit people, and you're not very good at your job. Number 17, Horrible. Oh, Christ. Shorty boy! All right, mate? All right, Paul. When the star of a sitcom blasts the show's quality a couple of years later, you know it probably wasn't that good. And that's true with Horrible. Starring Johnny Vaughan as a wannabe criminal and taxi driver, the BBC really wanted this to be successful. Even in their own review, they talked about its potential a lot while slipping in some criticisms. Oh, come on! One of the bad takeaways was Vaughan's acting, which is probably why he's better known as a radio presenter today. Also criticised was the awkward dialogue and the lack of chemistry between the characters. Where's the Don? He never left the room. See you. I love you sometimes. Number 16, Life of Riley. Having starred in the beloved Men Behaving Badly and fresh off her success in Life Begins, Caroline Quentin gave Life of Riley a go in 2009, and it didn't go too well. Yo! No, 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 don't sit! I've been plumping, you'll unplump! 
Involving newlyweds and the hijinks of their blended family, the show was slated after its first episode aired. Critics felt that it was an unfunny throwback to 1970s sitcoms that are only looked back at positively thanks to nostalgia. The funny moments often came across as forced and put the characters in unbelievable situations as a result. After three series, the show was cancelled. Oh, he, uh, stupid, wrong, but no admit. Well, it's been nice chatting to you. On the plus side, it freed up Neil Dudgeon to move to the most dangerous village in the world for Midsummer Murders. Number 15, Married for Life. I hate that new security light. <laughs> The US has had success with remaking British shows like The Office or American Idol, but when it's happened the other way around, there aren't that many that have done well. On 1996's Married for Life, a remake of Married with Children, is definitely on the bad pile. Starring comedian and musician Russ Abbott, the show came across as an American sitcom, except with British accents, and not quite as fun. From now on, <clears throat> Ted Butler is going to live with a bit of dignity. Even some of the comedic situations became unrealistic and required too much suspension of disbelief for many. Still, we witnessed young Hugh Bonneville and Rob Brydon making their mark on the small screen, so that's something. After seven episodes, ITV divorced Married for Life. My angel. Number 14, Mad About Alice. Ah, oh, that's nice. I used to have hamster when I was little, called Buttons. What's he called? Specimen 22. <laughs> Amanda Holden seems to be kryptonite to sitcoms. Several shows she's been on have tanked really badly. It's weird. Featuring her future radio co-host Jamie Thixton, you know you're in for a bad time as the duo sings the opening theme song for Mad About Alice. Well, what would you know? Oh, just look around you. It's Mad About Alice. Please don't remind me. Mad About Alice. The show is about an ex-couple who share parenting duties for their son while balancing their professional and personal lives. While the debut episode had strong viewing figures, the criticism was heavy. The Sunday people slated Theakston's acting and the show's smugness with its ever-decreasing levels of comedy. Yikes. After six episodes, Mad About Alice was thrown out by the BBC. Hey Scott, are you ready for me? Are you sure you're going to be warm enough in that? <laughs> Dog! Number 13, Land of Hope and Gloria. After years of performing with the R&B group The Three Degrees, Sheila Ferguson landed one of her first acting gigs with a starring role as Gloria Hepburn in Land of Hope and Gloria. You're going to have to try harder than that, Carrie. Remember, this guy's English. you got to be more direct. Playing an American that moves to the UK to become the business manager at a traditional stately home the show heavily leans on culture clash comedy, and it grew tiresome quickly. It also tried to make a British estate being run by a black American woman a strong source of content, but that quickly fell flat. After just six episodes being released by ITV, the sitcom was discarded. One could understand being homesick if one were English, but isn't it incredible to think of anyone being homesick for the United States of America? <laughs> While Ferguson carved out a great career in the theatre. Number 12, Babes in the Wood. Where am I and what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Chez. <laughs> Charlie! With a name based on a pun about women living in St John's Wood in London, Babes in the Wood was already off to a rough start when it arrived in 1998. Taking all the bad bits of Friends, the sitcom originally starred Denise Van Outen, Natalie Walter and Samantha Womack sharing a flat together. A lot of the criticism was how empty the content was. Well, there's no rule against being happy, is there? I'll have to check. Instead, it was dialogue heavy, with juvenile curse words throughout. But to make it worse, the jokes were also very predictable, which takes a lot of the fun out of watching a comedy as the surprise makes it infinitely better. After two series and a Christmas special, ITV felt that was enough torment. That's your Christmas tree? Yep. <laughs> Your neck chairs. I've seen moles with a healthier growth. That is perfect for the single man. Number 11, Mrs. Brown's Boys. See me on my first. I went to the doctor for my first visit. 
He told me to bring a sample with me. I brought a freaking milk bottle full of <laughs> No one in the UK knows how this show has survived for over 10 years. Every Christmas it plagues our screens, taunting us with its inexplicable longevity. We can only imagine creator Brendan O'Carroll has something on the BBC. Once the Irish UK produced Mrs Brown's Boys aired, it seemed like it would soon be axed. And if you get the wrong answers, he'll... Shoot me. <laughs> with a big gun. After all, the comedy and situations could easily fit into sitcoms from 50 years ago. It focuses heavily on gross humour and innuendos, which date it drastically. The show is even heavy in nepotism, since many in the cast are related to O'Carroll. But with four series, many specials, spin-offs, a film and stage shows, the show refuses to leave and has a bizarre, loyal following. It is the gonorrhea that rolls... <laughs> Number 10. Hard Sell Catherine Tate has had a busy 2022. Firstly, she wrote and starred in The Nan Movie. Then, she had her TV show Hard Sell debut on Netflix. Was this the Tier 1 dream? No. Was it the Tier 2 dream? Barely. It's one of Tate's first goals at a sitcom, as her bread and butter has been in sketch shows. This mockumentary series showcases life inside a prison, with Tate playing a range of characters. However, it didn't exactly go well with the audience or critics, with some taking shots at the constant use of repetition and double entendre toilet jokes. Because I didn't do it. We all didn't do it, love. No, but I, re I really didn't do it. Well, if your trial turns into a sentence, you know where to find me. Hard Sell is heavily stylized after The Office, which at times makes the show feel like it came out in the early 2000s. But it does get slightly better as the series goes on. Number 9. Coming of Age before the Inbetweeners came along and took the title for top teenage school comedy, there was Coming of Age on the BBC. Drama. <laughs> While the Inbetweeners was hugely popular and released multiple films, the same couldn't be said for Coming of Age. It could be due to the fact many of the jokes didn't exactly land well and tended to play poorly on gender stereotypes. On top of this, Many of the complaints point to the annoying and very immature characters. You're right, Pete. What? Yeah, yeah, all, all right. Yeah, it's not too bad. Just, uh, just figuring out a way to get Jazz to kiss me. But the biggest issue was its vulgarity and awkwardness. It also focused on obvious innuendos that have all the subtlety of a caffeinated bull on rollerblades in a fragile china shop during an earthquake. Look, why don't you just shut up and get out? Okay. Number 8. Brighton Bells The US and the UK love to make their own versions of each other's TV shows. The Office and Law and & Order are just a couple of examples. Well, in 1993, The Golden Girls was remade in the UK with Brighton Bells. But since it's in the video, it wasn't a success. Only six episodes into its run, the show was cancelled due to poor ratings. The remaining five episodes were squeezed in randomly to fill time in the schedule. Most of the issues stem from repeating the Golden Girls jokes and stories just with British accents, which made Brighton Bells pointless. This is a shame, since the cast featured the great Sheila Hancock and Wendy Craig. Number 7. Hardwick House Don't touch them either, especially if you're still not a proper teacher. My room, spring vest. It's not every day that a show is cancelled after only two episodes from a double bill premiere, but that was the fate of Hardwick House in 1987. The viewers were so outraged that the other five episodes weren't aired, and for good reason. The show was set at a school, with the teachers taking centre stage, and some of those teachers were a bit much. By now you will all be getting urges. Urges which you cannot always... History, maths, English, French and geography. Especially as one was hinted to have slain multiple people and another took a very unhealthy interest in the kids. One episode even featured a schoolgirl being graphically electrocuted and had a copper with a schoolboy on a lead. The unaired episodes did end up on the internet, but be prepared for shocking, uncomfortable humour. You dozy pillock. Come on, boy. Number 6. Bottle Boys 
The starring role of Dave Deacon in Bottle Boys was originally written for Jim Davison, so that should give you a good idea of its quality. Oh, you lucky beggar. <laughs> you chat her up? I uh, would have done, except for one thing. Ah, uh, she was married, eh? She was a fella. Instead, the role was given to Robin Asquith, who was known for doing the confession series of films in the 1970s. Beyond a theme tune that will worm its way into your brain and have you chanting it at inappropriate moments, the show had little going for it. The, battle of the, of the, boys. the story involved a football-loving deacon who worked as a milkman. He often tried to sleep with as many women as possible on his rounds. Yep, even in 1984 it felt horribly outdated. Critics slated the show. Some called this sitcom the worst ever. I mean, there's a hall full of people out there to say nothing of Councillor Lynch. What am I going to tell them? I shall go outside there. I shall go outside there, stand there. I shall make an announcement. I shall tell them that Bertie Winters is in this <laughs> Number five, The Holden Girls, Mandy and Myrtle. I love Johnny, but all he ever wants to do is gossip about people in the industry. I cannot stand that, so I just don't get involved. Some people might have been intrigued by a comedy featuring Amanda Holden and Lee, Keith Lemon Francis, but their interest would have fallen off a cliff after seeing this show. The Holden Girls' Mandy and Myrtle is a mockumentary about Holden attempting to persuade her nan to live with her. He does brilliant impression of Bruce Forsyth, actually. He does a really good impression of Bruce Every, Forsyth. Anyone can do Bruce Forsyth. The show relied heavily on celebrities dropping in and lending their star power, but that didn't win over viewers. If anything, it annoyed them more, as the show had little depth. Frances as Myrtle was weird for the prosthetic makeup alone. Holden has a history of being in despised comedies. Back in 2009, she was in the short lived circus sitcom Big Top. It regularly pops up on worst show lists. Hopefully, it will it will work. Um, Man, I'm from the things I've done for you. Stick your program up your heart. Number four, The Right Way. Ben Elton is a successful novelist playwright, comedian, and screenwriter with shows like Blackadder and The Young Ones. <laughs> so creating the right way is a massive blip in his career. As the Daily Mirror put it, the stick man being electrocuted in the opening titles is the lucky one. A sitcom all about council officer Gerald Wright, the show lacked any originality. Instead, preferring to reuse old jokes, telegraph humour, and constantly have the young character go on about recording things for YouTube. This is so a YouTube moment. Weirdly, this isn't the only time Elton has delivered a massive TV dud. In 2005, he created Blessed, which featured a great cast. However, it still got panned almost as much as the right way would years later. Bill and Mary. That's right, Bill and Mary. <laughs> Bill and Mary. Bill and Mary. <laughs> Bill and Mary. Number three, Sam's Game. When you think of Davina McCall, you remember she's a great presenter. Unfortunately, the role of actor doesn't really spring to mind. No, I'm Sam, you're Tom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no! Sit down! <laughs> and a big part of that reason is due to Sam's Game. When it came out, it was talked about as though it would make McCall's career in the acting world. Instead, it made sure she would forever remain a wonderful presenter. Even with a cast featuring Tristan Gemmell, Tamika Emson, and Ed Byrne, the sitcom quickly wore out its welcome. All about a group of flatmates, Sam's Game relied on the goodwill of UK Friends fans, just minus the relatability, fun, or comedy. <laughs> Friendly. After only one series of being placed in the primetime slot, Sam's Game was unplugged. Number two, The Royal Bodyguard. I believe you're expecting me, Guy Hubble, Royal Bodyguard. David Jason is a comedy legend thanks to his work on Only Fools and Horses as Derek Del Boy Trotter. So when it was announced he would star in the sitcom The Royal Bodyguard as the Queen's top protector, everyone was excited to see it. Then, once they did, the audience horribly regretted getting swept away with nostalgia. I'm sorry, I've forgotten. Am I good cop or bad cop? Bad cop. Bad cop. Thank you very much, okay. Around 8 million people tuned in to watch the debut episode on Boxing Day. By the end of the episode, 
1.5 million people had changed the channel. Yikes. People slated the script and the lack of clever or original jokes as the main problem. You have an IQ somewhere between that of a goldfish and a fruit bat. Well, to be fair, sir, I, um, I did have a bit of a cold that day. As a result of the backlash, the series wasn't renewed and instead perished after only six episodes. Number one, Heil Honey, I'm Home. Oh boy. Don't touch me. You've been late for your dinner every night this week. Ava, babe, please. I'm the Fuhrer. Imagine the worst premise for a sitcom, then times it by a hundred and you'll get Heil Honey, I'm Home. The story is about Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun living together in a flat. Their neighbours are a Jewish couple, Arnie and Rosa Gildenstein. Hitler regularly makes his hatred of them known. Not surprisingly, it was cancelled after only one episode. I'll show him around the town, we'll have a few beers. You forget about Czechoslovakia. He'll think, hey, this Adolf Hitler is a regular guy. <laughs> On top of trying to make Hitler funny, the show also tried to parody American sitcoms from the 50s. They were aiming for satire, apparently, but ended up instead just offending everyone. Other historical figures that were set to be parodied include Neville Chamberlain, Joseph Stalin, and Hermann Göring. Yeah, it's not shocking it didn't work out. Okay. 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 That's good. They don't know. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.